What do you think of Pakistanis? Uh, well, I couldn't eat a whole one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a Pakistani who lives next door to me. And he says to me the other day, I'm a better man than you. I say, I never said you fucking wasn't. What makes you think you're a better man than me? He says, I've not got a fucking Paki living next door to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the jokes, you must never take them serious. The, the Pakistani that lives next door to me, he's a doctor and he's a very clever man and we're good friends. He wouldn't take offence at that, he'd laugh his bollocks. <laughs> Mr. Irish always used to knock him out with his packy, and the packy got knocked down, killed stone dead. The copper said, what was his name? He said, we never knew his name, sir. Just used to booze them, you know. He said, where did he live? He says, uh, we knew fuck all about the man, he said. The only thing we knew about him, he had two arseholes. He said, how do you mean? He said, every pub we went in, he used to say, here's that packy with them two arseholes. <laughs> what about the Irish fellow went to a Ku Klux Klan fancy dress ball as Al Jolson? <laughs> Them Irish are unbelievable, aren't they? Fella going, going back to Ireland, an Irishman going back to Ireland. That's a fucking change, isn't it? <laughs> Got in this taxi at Liverpool, and the taxi driver says, it's a long journey to the airport. He said, we'll have a few riddles. He looked in the mirror, in the mirror he said, uh, Brothers and sisters, have I none, but that man's father is my father's son. Who is it? The Irish fella said, uh, I don't know. He said, it's me, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck me, he said, you're right. <laughs> he got up for a trial and he says to his father, uh, I'll give you a bit of a riddle, he said. Looked in the mirror, he said, uh, Brothers and sisters, have I known, but that man's father is my father's son. Who is it? His father said, How the fuck do I know? He said, You ignorant cunt. <laughs> He's a taxi driver in Liverpool. <laughs> what about the Irish working men's club went on a mystery tour and they had a suite to guess where they was going. And a fucking driver won 68 quid. <laughs> Irish family watching television, the old fella said, Bridget! 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 Close your legs. The K I D S can see your cunt. <laughs> Irish fella, on the top of this blazing building. The fireman shout, jump in the blanket, Paddy, jump in the blanket. Not fucking likely, he said. You English, you ain't the fucking sight of us, he says. I'm jumping in no blanket. I'll jump, you pull the blanket away, he said. Put the blanket on the floor, then I'll fucking jump. He said. <laughs> it's a pity they can't solve the problem in Ireland, you know, because they're funny nature, you know that about that. I don't know what they fucking find about, they're all white. <laughs> what are you scrapping about? What they want is a million packages rubbing around in the middle of Belfast, you know, they've got fucking problems, then all right. <laughs> We've got the fucking lot here. Azerbaijanis are coming now. What the fuck do they sell? <laughs> i never heard of such fucking people. <laughs> Two Irish fellas walking through the Vatican once said, you see that fella over there with the crooked stick and the mitre cap? I think that's the Pope. I don't think it is. He says, I'm sure it is. So I'll go and ask him. He went up and he says, are you the Pope? He says, fuck up. <laughs> he went back and said, what did he say? He said, he wouldn't commit himself. <laughs> Irish fellow went for a job on a building site. He said, what's your name? He says, Paddy Mulligan. He said, how do you spell it? He says, stick the job up your ass. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. There's two Jews walking through Glasgow and a big gang of these skinheads come walking towards him. He said, look at these bastards here, Morris. We're going to get mugged here. He said, I think we are. I said, I'm fucking sure we are. Anyway, here's that 600 quid here, owe you. <laughs> two Jews talking. One said, what do you do if you won the pool time? If I won a million pounds, I'd give you half. You're my best friend. He said, what about if you had two houses? If I had two houses, I'd give you a house. You're my friend. He said, what about if you had two cars? If you had two cars, I'd give you a car. He said, what about if you had two chickens? He says, now, fuck off. You know I've got two chickens. <laughs> the best Jewish gag ever. Because with Jewish humour, you know, you get the punchline right at the very last second. This one's a fucking masterpiece. Little Jewish fellow in the synagogue praying, Lord, he says, 
Help me, please. You're a Jew, I'm a Jew. Help me. I don't know which way to fucking turn, he said. I'm up to my neck in debt, he said. I owe every bastard. Please, Lord, let me win the sweepstake. I've got to win that sweepstake, Lord. Everybody gets paid if I win the sweepstake. A week went past. Fuck all. <laughs> He's there again next Saturday morning. Lord, he says, are you fucking listening to me? Please, I've got to win the sweepstake, Lord. Let me win the sweepstake, please. Another week went past. Not a fucking light. He's there again next Saturday morning. He's on his knees now. Get a Jew on his knees, you can black fucking sawdust. <laughs> Lord, he says, help me please, you lousy bastard. <laughs> Let me win the fucking sweepstake. Fuck's sake, he said. Come here three times now, he said. I've got to win that fucking sweepstake, he says. Please. And the clouds parted. <laughs> and a voice said, I me, meet me halfway. Buy a fucking ticket. <laughs> Two Jews about to be shot by the Gestapo, Avi and Ivy. Stood there. <laughs> Any last request before you're shot? He said, uh, can we stand behind the wall? <laughs> you cannot stand behind the wall. Stand still. Navy stepped forward, he said, you dirty German bastard. Fuck you and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I he said, don't cause trouble. <laughs> and the Germans are bashing, oh, they don't know, he might film all the course. When he sees Germany, he got the good old days. <laughs> English fella lived next door. This packy had a goose. He laid egg in his garden. He went round. He said, I've come for me goose egg. He said, me goose is laid egg. He said, oh, no, 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 no. No, the egg belongs to me, he said. The egg is on my land. The egg belongs to me. That is Indian law. He says, give us that fucking egg. He said, I'm telling you, the egg is on my land. The egg belongs to me. That is Indian law. He said, well, never mind Indian law. We'll have English law just for a fucking change. He said. I kick you in the bollocks, you kick me in the bollocks. The one that gives up first owns the egg. <laughs> as long as that's the law, he said. Oh, and he gave me right kicking the bollocks. She said, oh, fucking hell, he said. Oh, that fucking smart start, he said. But it's my turn now. He says, keep the fucking egg. walked in the pub with a crocodile, and the landlord said, get it out. He said, it does tricks. He says, tricks, you barmy bastard. Get that crocodile out of here, and now, move with the crocodile. He says, you're going to have a thrombosis where you're going on. He says, calm down, he said. You've not seen the trick yet. What's this? Open the crocodile's mouth, like that. Put his prick in his mouth, like that. Got a bit of wood out of his back pocket, and bang! Right across the head. The crocodile went. Fucking hell, he said, you've got some bottles you're out like that. He said, I told it was good. He said, all that fucking screaming and shouting. Anybody in this pub like to try it for 50 quid? This little old woman says, I'll try it. She said, but don't hit me on the fucking head as I'll hit that crocodile. <laughs> At the end of the worst of Bernard Manning, for people who still haven't made up their mind as to whether you're a hero or a villain, let's turn the spotlight on and you... Give them a message. Well, my message is never take a joke seriously. I'm a father and a grandfather. My stage act is an act. It's not what I take in my own home. I have a wonderful family. I don't think I've ever had a parking ticket in my life. I've never been charged with any offence. I run a good club at the Embassy Club for 36 years. Never had any problems there. It's been a wonderful life. I've made billions and billions of people laugh. And for them that have not made laugh, get fucked. Now here's a no. million dollar question. What is funny? What Everything's makes a funny. crowd, uh, everybody laugh? Everything's funny. Everything's funny. Uh, psychiatrist gags. Fellow walks in and says, uh, can you help me out? He says, well, which way do you come in? 
<laughs> you know, little quickies like that. Uh, fat people. Cyril Smith just walked a water bend, fucking Lake Windermere. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, walked in the pub. He says, eight brandies, please. You're not the eight brandies back. He said, I shouldn't be drinking like this with what I've got. She said, what have you got? He says, fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> If you like a smoke, have a smoke. If you like a drink, have a drink. If you like chips, have chips. If you like bread, have bread. Take no fucking notes of these specialists. They'll have you in bed for seven o'clock. <laughs> drink and drive if you want. There's nothing worse than having a smash if you're fucking still cold soap. <laughs> the copper says, all the back ends hanging off. He says, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> When the police pull you up, you know, they must caution you. Remember that? They've got to caution you. They'll say to you, you're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down and used in evidence. Your next sentence must be, please don't hit me again, officer. Well, this time, I've seen some ugly bastards in club, but you took the fucking bill, you. Oh, Jesus. If you get a fucking ear tonight, there's a chance for all of us, I'll tell you that. Dear me. Anyway, sat with a coloured gentleman there. How are you, my old friend? Where am I see you from? Where are you from, sir? Where? Norfolk. Which side of fucking Delhi is that on? No Norfolk? Well, it's nice that you've got that far, have they? Norfolk. In this bed and swinging through the fucking trees, having a night out with nice people. Instead of satin. Sat in the fucking tent watching the sheep die and all that fucking bother. Oh, them poor people. I don't know. I mean, all them Ethiopians needed, all them Ethiopians needed was Lenny Henry and his fucking big fat wife going over there showing her what it looks like to eat six fucking meals a day. I bet when they looked at him they thought it was fucking Gulliver. Oh, dear me. Quasimodo's running down the road and all these kids are after him. He said, I've got your fucking ball. <laughs> Quasimodo walks in this pub. He says, Scotch whiskey, please. He says, Bell's all right. He says, mind your own fucking business. Well, the dash in the house says, come on, love, pack your bags, I'm on the pools. Come on, he says, pack your bags, I'm on the pools. She wants, shall I pack some at light, some at heavy, where are we going? He says, just pack them and fuck off. <laughs> hey. Hey, enjoying yourself, son? What a lovely atmosphere in here tonight, eh? Hey, when white people get together, we're going to enjoy ourselves, can't we? <laughs> I think we'll have a lynch in about half twelve with that country over there. I've got a rope in the car, don't worry about that. Oh, always carry a spare rope. This time last year it was pissing down with rain. We didn't have a summer like we've just had. It was a bastard this time last year. Terrible. Strikes all over the country. Sid Vicious died. I couldn't fucking sleep right about that. I tossed and turned all night when Sid Vicious died. The dirty, scruffy bastard. They couldn't bury him. The dustbin men were on strike at the time. There was an Irish punk rocker took a pin out of his nose. His head blew off. Johnny Rotten's just teamed up with Ronnie Barkin. In future, it's going to be good night from me and fuck off from him. That's how the world's gone now. Unbelievable. That's me shaking hands with the Queen backstage along the Palladium. Welcome up before me, you know. He was with her, the Duke of Kent. What a gormless bastard he is. <laughs> oh, Mr. Manning laughed my balls off tonight. You know. <laughs> Unbelievable. Try <laughs> <that> again. <laughs> anyway, life's wonderful. Life is wonderful. That's what it's all about. Enjoying yourself. Two girls on the cash out at the supermarket. One says, you can always tell the money follows from the single follows. How do you do that? He said, what's this? A follow come up. He said, one mushroom, one egg, one tomato, one slice of bacon, and one tin of beans. He said, you're a single fellow, aren't you? He said, how do you know that? 
She said, you're right, ugly cunt. <laughs> There's a ticket tart outside Old Trafford. And the fellow went up, he said, how much are the tickets? He says, uh, 100 quid a piece. 100 pounds, he said. And get a woman for that. He said, I know, but you won't get 45 minutes each way in a band at half time. <laughs> Yorkshire couple on holidays in Spain. First day there, she says, George, we forgot the best door. He says, I wish, she says, aye. She said, but I think that couple across the road, I think they're English, she said. Knock and see if they've any best door. And he went over. Fellow comes to the door, he says, uh, ask any best door. He says, fuck off, you Spanish cunt. <laughs> Your fucking head shining in my eyes here. <laughs> I can move in spot like that. If you want to get that weight off your fat twat, <laughs> telling you, it's fucking hanging. I used to be fat like that. Fucking hell. It's only willpower. If I can do it, anybody fucking can. But a willpower. Up in the morning, punch the bag about, and then she gets up, makes a cup of tea. Well, I've given this bird one. She said, you've only got a small organ, haven't you? She said, yes, but it's never played in a cathedral before. <laughs> you Japanese never fucking laugh, do you? Hey, you never laugh. <laughs> We've not forgot Pearl Harbor, pal. Don't you fucking worry about that. What a shit house trick that was. <laughs> Sat there, he can't wait to go home, make all the Datsun. <laughs> you look a nice young fella. Go and piss on that job. <laughs> Bastards. No fucking time for a me. There was a, a plane crashed in Madrid about six months ago. Two hundred Japanese on that plane. Broke my fucking heart. Six empty seats there was. <laughs> so she... Now stars on Sunday when they come back in the second half. JC was walking through Jerusalem and all these women were throwing stones at this prostitute and half bricks and slates. And he said, turn it in. Turn it in! He was a nasty bastard with my mother, the piss of the dinner time, you know. <laughs> Used to go out changing water into wine, everybody got pissed out of the mind. <laughs> turn it in, he said. Any woman here without sin, let her cast the first stone. Ooh, and a bleeding big rock come over. <laughs> Hit this process, you ran the back of the head, he turned around, he said, you know, mother, sometimes you fucking <laughs> piss me off. <laughs> Ooh. Got a stripper on tonight to the splits over a Guinness bottle. You've never seen nothing like it in your life. It's cost a fucking fortune. Lost 14 crates of Guinness last night. <laughs> I shook her up about half ten. It was frothy, man. Frothy, frothy. Man. Where are you from, son? Must <laughs> be Irish. You don't fucking know. Where are you from, son? Where are you from? Half a day here in Manchester. Are you a city supporter? Oh, we're having a rough time, aren't we, just at present? But never mind, son. He'll come again. They got the crowd to autograph the fucking ball the other night. <laughs> oh, it's fucking awful down there, you know. We can't keep managers. We auctioned two balls here the other night. One was Sammy the City players, the other Sammy the City managers. The one who won the play of the ball said the goalkeeper has not signed it. I said, no, but he got his fucking fingers to it. Big gang of fellas running down the road. The fella said, what's up? He said, a lion escaped. Which way did it go? He said, you don't think we're fucking chasing it, do you? <laughs> you know why seagulls have wings? To beat the fucking gypsies to the tip. <laughs> You're learning all the time. You're learning all the time. Have you ever had any celebrities try to take you on in your career and sort of said you're offensive or, you know, for whatever? Yes, I've had... Uh, uh, the f I did three Michael Parkinson's uh, a few years ago when the Parkinson show was going. I did three of them. And on the first one, they brought Esther Ranson on to nail me <laughs> because her, her husband produced the show, I think. Wilcox, is his name Wilcox? Yeah, Desmond Wilcox. He produced the show. 
and they said, we've got a nice little upstart comic from the comedians, and we'd like you to nail him. So that come unstuck because I made Esther Lanson look like a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to excel on, on, uh, on chat shows because they give you a free hand, it's late at night, and you can have a bit of a go and say bollocks if you want. What were you gay if you crossed George Forby with Eddie Burke? And you don't know me, you'd get to turn down nice again, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, look, let's get nice normally down here. Why is the fuck? Stop me having cancer, let me put you. Fuck Roy Castle. <laughs> He's getting some fucking mileage out of that, isn't he? <laughs> no, we do until he stopped fucking smoking. <laughs> hey? Give him six months to live, is I'll do it in four. <laughs> do you know that 100% of non smokers fucking die? <laughs> you know, my ambition is to go live on the antique roadshow and say to some old woman, you know, that's worth fuck all. <laughs> Not a fucking carrot. Now fuck off with it. I'd live on Sunday up, wouldn't it? <laughs> you better listen to that screeching bastard, that is seeking. Whoever told that man he could fucking sing, I don't know. <laughs> Forty years we've put up with that bleeding nonsense. <laughs> Never see him on that highway, I'll knock the cunt down and tell you. <laughs> Straight over him, I'll go. It's fucking awful. What a night, nice hey. What a night. Nice. Yorkshire Miner went over to South Africa for a job. He said, these credentials, we couldn't fault these. It's people like you want over here. We have a lot of trouble with the blacks. He said, well, we've got a few in York. He said, it's not the same from He said, we don't fucking bother them. He said, what do we do then? He said, well, I'll give you a bit of a test. There's a revolver. Go and shoot six niggers and a rabbit. He said, what have I got to shoot the rabbit for? He says, you've got the fucking job. <laughs> On that door, John, there, will you, son? Let a bit of fresh air in. Get the air conditioning on, son. <laughs> That's right. Let that fucking dragon fly out now. <laughs> okay, lovely. It's dark outside. You know what I'm fucking know it. Lovely. Just get some nice little cuckoo layer for it. Why don't you ever wear champion of bells and join the wall, son? <laughs> fucking hell. Lean on him, you cook your fucking self. <laughs> Dear me. Where are you from, anyway? Middleton. Middleton? Oh, he's very posh up there, isn't he? My word. Even the fire station sec director where he comes from. <laughs> Oh, you ring up and say, who recommended us? <laughs> oh, them fucking teeth are making into tomatoes with a fucking tennis racket with them, can <laughs> Okay, no. That fucking has done it. Not fucking knows you've got the fucking lot, you. I'll tell you what. Hey, you know what? I feel I'm fucking nearer than you. Give it a lot. <laughs> well, I've seen some ugly bastard in here, but you've got the fucking lot. If you get a... I hope Mrs. Whitehouse gets this video anyway. <laughs> Somebody will have to explain what a cunt is. <laughs> I bet she's never seen a prick. Not unless she watched that Arthur Scargill on the television the other night. <laughs> oh, aye. I had his fellow bought a watch. He said he won't lose a second in 25 years. Very expensive watch. All the family sat watching television. News at 10 come up. Bum, 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 bum. Right on the clock. 25 past five. <laughs> His son sat there. He said, have you been fucking about with that television set? <laughs> Twat. <laughs> Never let him stop you laughing. It's one thing about us English, we can laugh, can't we? Hey, we've got a great sense of humour, we have, you know. It's the greatest country in the world, there's no doubt about it. They all want to fucking come here, don't they? Where are you from, son? Where are you from? You look a bit foreign to me. <laughs> He's a bit of Italian in you. He's a bit of Italian in you. Greek. Ooh, that's fucking worse. <laughs> Don't be smashing any fucking plates in here tonight, you know. <laughs> it's nice to have you with us anyway. Will you be going home shortly? Or just, are you... <laughs> You're not stopping for good, are you? I think there's a bit of fucking pucky in you, son. <laughs> Your father must have stopped over at fucking Bangladesh or somewhere, eh? <laughs> hey? Looks a bit Italian to me, that lying bastard. 
their flag should be a white cross and a white background. <laughs> Is that your girlfriend here? Your wife? You dropped the right fucking bollock there, didn't you? <laughs> That's well, everybody's got a cross to bear some, and that's yours. I bet she looks all right after about 25 pints, though, eh? <laughs> and a face like a fucking blistered piss pot. <laughs> this doctor says to this fella now, look, your wife's are either got Alzheimer's disease or AIDS. He said, we give a thorough examination, he said, we can't fathom it out. He said, what do we do then? He said, well, on your way home in the car, he said, drop her off about four miles from your house. If she comes home, don't fuck her. There's some ugly bastards about that, I'll tell you. Quasimodo went on Mastermind, sat down, he said, good evening, everybody, good evening. <laughs> don't mind all that, bollocks. What do you answer questions on? He said, uh, masturbation, masturbation. <laughs> you can't answer questions on masturbation. He said, well, I've started now, so I'll finish it. <laughs> Where's Teddy Waite? There's only me asking about that poor bastard, Teddy Waite. He'll be running around his cell now trying to catch a beetle or a rat for his supper. I'm going home to steak pudding and chips. You've had a big nosh. Anyway, fuck him. <laughs> he should stop at home and mind his own fucking business. I bet he won't go again in hurry. Hey? <laughs> that Archbishop of Canterbury. Would you like to go over to... Oh, fuck off, he'll say. Send some other cunt. <laughs> you wouldn't know, wouldn't you? It's all right sending other people out as long as you're not fucking going. All right. Do good as they call them. Do good as the fucking world's full of do good as. Had a mate like that at school, always busy. What a nosy twat he was. He went to Africa to help the hungry, and he fucking ate him. What kind of tricks are them? <laughs> you see, priorities are all wrong. We've got kids getting knocked about today, old people getting mugged and raped, and all the Duke of Edinburgh is worried about. There's only a thousand pandas left in the world. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about pandas? <laughs> Won't worry me if I've never seen a fucking panda. <laughs> fucking man, he's up to now. Even a panda won't fuck a panda. That's why there's no fucking pandas. <laughs> That's easy enough to work out, isn't it? I've got a Chinese lives next door, but one to me, he just moved in, he said, uh, Mr. Baring, your house, same size as my house. How many rolls of wallpaper for your front room? I said, 40. Some before that, they said, uh, Mr. Baring, I've got four rolls left over. I said, so have I. <laughs> this burglar broke into this house. He thought, I'll have that video, I'll have the television, I'll have that nice little grandfather clock. And a voice said, I can see you, and Jesus can see you. No, oh, what the fuck you know was that? He turned around, he's just a parrot on a perch. He said, was that you? The parrot says, yeah. He says, you frightened me of fucking death then. He said, what's your name? He says, Archibald. He said, that's a funny fucking name for a part of that, isn't it? He says, not as funny as that fucking rock by a little Jesus. <laughs> Look at this scruffy cunt on the first row. Have you ever seen a lot like that? You make a good tramp if you smarten your fucking self up a bit. There's a fella riding through uh, with Ireland with it on his donkey and his wife's walking behind the copper pulled him up. He said, could you tell me, he says, why are you riding that donkey and your wife walking behind him? He said, well, that's dead fucking easy, he said. She ain't got a fucking donkey. <laughs> of our Indian friends on the front row. Nice to have you with us, me old son. Hey, who's man in the fucking shop? <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> They're all right, there's nothing wrong with them. They come in quite regular, these two lads here. Smashing, they've been after a job for a fucking wage of a long time. <laughs> They're fucking dodgy, you know what I mean? 
Anyway, nice of you with us, my old son. Don't come again just for tonight. All right. It's all right. Don't mind fucking once, but don't make a habit of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> this time last year was pissing down with rain, unemployment, soaring, no light at the end of the tunnel. It was fucking awful this time last year. Robert Maxwell joined the drifters. <laughs> Got Ken Dodd off, Len Fairclough off. Uh, millions for that, Richard Branson. Millions for that airline, the Virgin Airlines. He was coming over Ireland in that balloon, saw an Irish farm. He says, where am I? Where am I? He says, you can't kid me, you cunt. You're in that fucking basket. <laughs> hey! You never could pick Ken Dodd in Liverpool. You're lucky to get a fucking jury together, man. You pick Ken Posh fella stood at the bar with this working lad. He says, I bought my wife a Mercedes yesterday and a Rolls Royce. The Mercedes to knock about town and shop and the Rolls to go to Ascot New Market Place by like that. I said, I bought my wife a pair of slippers and a vibrator. Oh yes, he said, I said, if you don't like the slippers, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> How long you been over here, boys? How long you been over here? Pardon? Ten years. Ten years. Well, it's, I suppose you're used to the place now, aren't you? Are you in business at all? Yeah. What, what, you, what, what business are you in? Market. You stand markets? Oh, very nice. That's lovely. I'm not in the shop yet. That's, that's the next move. Isn't it? <laughs> that's the next move, isn't it? You've heard about the fellas going round Bradford taking pot shots at Seeks. And the police have nicknamed him the, uh, the Terminator. <laughs> Cross country runner on right in this quicksand, sinking slowly, he's up to there. The runner going past, he said, Get us out, will you, pal? He said, Only if you suck me dick. <laughs> Fuck off, he says. Another runner going past, he's up to here now. He said, Get us out, will you, pal? He said, Only if you suck me dick, pal. Not bleeding likely, he said. He's up to here now. The fellow going past, he said, Jesus, take, get me out of here, please. I'll suck your dick for you. He said, you dirty bastard, get out of it. <laughs> Baker went to this house, knocked at the door. He says, uh, she said, yes, what do you want? He said, I've come over your little Johnny swearing in class. She said, it's them bastards next door, she said. I'm fucking sick of telling them, she said. Since we've moved round here, he said, the shit houses around here, the fucking lot of them, she said. Have a word with his father while you're here. He went and he said, uh, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> he said, come over your little Johnny swearing in class. He said, I'm sick to fucking death of telling him. It's them kids next door. She will let them play with them. Bastards, a lot of them around here. He said. <laughs> I'm fucking sick of it, he said. Have a cup of tea while you're here, father. He says, no, I better fuck off now. I've got a master. <laughs> Now over here on this table here, ladies and gentlemen, celebrating tonight, there's two young men with us tonight that fought at Goose Green in the Falcon Islands. Thank you very much. Over here on this front table. <laughs> celebrating with us tonight. Thank you. <laughs> They're Argentinians. <laughs> and if you want to clap for shit like that, you're all busy. <laughs> Cheeky bastards coming in here. Two fellas well pissed in this pub, one stutter very badly, he says, ah, ah. <laughs> This bank, he went to this, uh, this bank, he said, I want to cash a cheque, please. He said, oh, that's all right, sir. He said, sign the back. No, he said, I don't want to sign the back. I want to sign the front like the, uh, the white men do. <laughs> he said, sign the fucking back. <laughs> he said, I want to sign the front like the white men do. He said, well, you better sign the bank. I'll go in the bank across the road, he said. I stormed out. Went in this bank across the road, he said. I want to catch a check, please. He said, sign the bank. He said, I want to sign the front like the white men do. He said, don't fuck me about, pal. <laughs> sign the fucking bank. He said, I want to sign the front like the white men do. 
Pull him over the fucking car, he said. Sign the fucking back. Get it fucking signed. He signed the back and gave him the money. Went to the bank next day, the first bank he went to, he says, I got that cash for that check. He said, you signed the back. He said, I did. He said, I told you you'd have to. He said, yes, but you didn't explain like the gentleman of the crown. <laughs> This buggy went up to heaven there, St. Peter come to the door, he said, yes, what do you want? He says, Randy Sims from Rochdale. And St. Peter shouted in there, anybody order a fucking taxi? <laughs> this Indian went up to heaven, he said, I'd like to come in, St. Peter said, well, it's only for Christians, this place, my old son. He said, well, I give £2,000 to the Christian Aid Society last week. Hang on a bit, he said, I'll go see the boss. He come back, he said, here's your two grand now, fuck off. <laughs> this Negro went to in Birmingham, Alabama, he says, uh, to book like, you know, and this big state trooper said, uh, what do you want? He says, uh, I've come to book. He said, there's no Negroes voting today. He said, I can read and I can write. So I've come to book. He said, can you write? He said, I can. He said, got a piece of grease proof paper and a fucking biro pen. Put your name and address on there, he said. He said, I could write when I left home this morning, he said. He said, I still vote him because I can fucking read, he said. He says, can you read? He said, read that. Fucking Jewish Chronicle. He said, I don't know what the small print says, but uh, the headlines are, there's no Negroes voting today. South Africa's the place, even the licorice sauce sauce is separate back and over there, you know. They won't be fucked about, them South Africans. There's two South Africans walking through the jungle. There's a lion there licking all the lion's ass. He said, that's a bit unusual. No, he's just a nigger. He's trying to get the fucking taste out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, the bastards, they're not like us, tolerant. What about the kind white South Africa went up to this nigger with two tires burning round his neck? He says, for fuck's sake, check one officer. Never mix cross plies with radio. <laughs> I went to see City play just after last Christmas. We drew one apiece. Little scouts to come up. Uh, Anfield. He said, can I mind your car, mister? I said, no, there's a fucking rock wild in the back of there. Oh, he said, he can put fires out, can he? <laughs> the scouser went for a job in a building site. The former said, what would you want to paint that 80-foot chimney? He said, 80-foot fucking brush. Scouts have got for a prostitute. She said, would you like a blowjob? He said, uh, will it affect me dough money? It's nice to see the Grumbleweeds in, in, in the club tonight anyway. Give them a nice round of applause. Very, very talented young men. <laughs> got a great future. Got a great future. You've been here many, many years ago for £125, but it was just six of you. I think I got fucked that week. There was only five. <laughs> hey. Pay for six. <laughs> anyway, it was £125, and I don't begrudge it. You can come back again any time you want. Same fucking money, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, this fella knocked a bloke down with his car. The copper says, you bastard. He said, he never looked left or right. He said, he's no fucking need in his own kitchen. <laughs> And I walked in this pub and he was well pissed when he walked in. Drank eight pints of bitter, looked round the room, he says, you lot over there, a shout of bastards. And you lot over there, a shout of cunts. This big Irish fella stood up and says, I'm not a bastard. He said, well, get over there with a the cunt. 